HMS Beagle's keel was laid in June 1818. Construction cost 7,803 British pounds, and the ship was launched on the 11th of May, 1820. In July of that year, she took part in a fleet review on the River Thames, celebrating the coronation of King George IV of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. Captain Pringle Stokes was appointed captain of Beagle on the 7th of September, 1825, and the ship was allocated to the surveying section of the Hydrographic Office. On the 27th of September, 1825, HMS Beagle docked at Woolwich, London, England, to be repaired and fitted out for her new duties. Her guns were reduced from 10 cannons to 6, and a mizzen mast was added to improve her handling, thereby changing her from a brig to a bark. HMS Beagle set sail from Plymouth, Devonshire, England on the 22nd of May, 1826 on her first voyage under the command of Captain Stokes. The mission was to accompany the larger ship HMS Adventure on a hydrographic survey of the southern section of South America, particularly Patagonia and Tierra del Fuego. The mission was under the overall command of the Australian Captain Philip Parker King, commander and surveyor. Faced with the more difficult part of the survey, in the desolate waters of Tierra del Fuego, Captain Stokes fell into a deep depression. At Port Famine, on the Strait of Magellan, he locked himself in his cabin for 14 days, then after getting overexcited and, and taking of preparations for the next cruise, shot himself on the 2nd of August, 1828. Following four days of delirium, Stokes recovered slightly, but then his conditions deteriorated and he died on the 12th of August, 1828. Captain Parker King, then replaced Stokes with the Beagle's first lieutenant, Lieutenant William George Skyring, as commander, and both ships set sail to Montevideo, Uruguay. On the 13th of October, Commander King sailed HMS Adventure to Rio de Janeiro, Kingdom of Brazil, for refitting and provisions. During this work, Rear Admiral Sir Robert Otway, Commander-in-Chief of the South American Station, arrived aboard HMS Ganges and announced his decision that Beagle was also to be brought to Montevideo, Uruguay for repairs, and that he intended to supersede Skyring. HMS Beagle was immediately taken into dock at Devonport, Plymouth, England for extensive rebuilding and refitting. As she required a new deck, Fitzroy had the upper deck raised considerably by 8 inches aft and 12 inches forward. The Cherokee class ship had the reputation of being coffin brigs, which handled badly and were prone to sinking. Additional sheathing added to the hull added about 7 tons to her burthen and perhaps 15 to her displacement. The ship was one of the first to be fitted with the lightning conductor invented by William Snow Harris. Fitzroy spared no expense in her fitting out, which included 22 chronometers. Captain Fitzroy had found a need for expert advice on geology during the first voyage and had resolved that if on a similar expedition he would endeavor to carry out a personal qualified to examine the land while the officers and myself would attend to hydrography. A sequence of inquiries led to Charles Darwin, a young gentleman on his way to becoming a rural clergyman, joining the voyage. HMS Beagle was originally scheduled to leave on the 24th of October 1831, but because of delays in her preparations, the departure was delayed until December. Setting forth on what was to become a groundbreaking scientific expedition, she departed from Devonport, Plymouth, England on the 10th of December. Due to bad weather, her first stop was just a few miles ahead at Barn Pool on the west side of Plymouth Sound. HMS Beagle left Anchorage from Barn Pool on the 27th of December, passing the nearby town of Plymouth. After completing extensive surveys in South America, she returned via New Zealand to Falmouth, Cornwall, England on the 2nd of October, 1836. Charles Darwin kept a diary of his experiences and rewrote this as a book titled Journal and Remarks, published in 1839, as the third volume of his official account of the expedition. This travelogue and scientific journal was widely popular and was reprinted many times with various titles, becoming known as The Voyage of the Beagle. In the six months after returning from the second voyage, some light repairs were made and HMS Beagle was commissioned to survey large parts of the coast of Australia under the command of Commander John Clements Wickham who had been a lieutenant on the second voyage. They left Woolwich, they left Woolwich, southeast London, on the 9th of June, 1837, towed by HM Steamer Boxer, and after reaching Plymouth, spent the remainder of the month adjusting their instrument. They set off from Plymouth Sound on the morning of July 5th, 1837, 
and sailed south with stops for observations at Tenerife, Canary Islands, Bahia, Brazil, and Cape Town, South Africa. They reached the Swan River in Australia on the 15th of November, 1837. Their survey started with the western coast between there and the Fitzroy River, Western Australia, then surveyed both shores of the Bass Strait at the southeast corner of the continent. In May 1839, they sailed north to survey the shores of the Arafur Sea opposite Timur. When Wickham fell ill and resigned, the command was taken over in March 1841 by Lieutenant John Lord Stokes, who continued the survey. The third voyage was finally completed in 1843. In 1845, Beagle was refitted as a static Coast Guard watch vessel, like many similar watch ships stationed in rivers and harbors throughout the nation. She was transferred to HM Customs and Excise to control smuggling on the Essex coast in the navigable waterways beyond the north bank of the Thames estuary. In the 1851 naval list, dated 25th May, it showed HMS Beagle was renamed South End WV No. 7 at Peglesham. In 1870, she was sold to Messrs. Murray and Trainer to be broken up. On the 31st of December 2011, the Naval Victoria Museum in Puntas Arenas, Chile, announced the building of the first full-scale replica of HMS Beagle. Construction began on the 1st of November 2012, using Nathafenga's Dumbayi timber from the local rainforest. In 2013, the Chilean national press started to take an interest in the work in progress. The replica was finished in 2017 and is now open to the public. If you liked the video, then feel free to click the like button. If you want to subscribe or comment, please do so. You can help financially support the channel by donating on my Patreon page. And you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I bid you farewell.